Russell Simmons, I wish so much that more people actually knew. I think so many know from you, you from Hip Hop uh, Pioneer with Def Jam and, uh, and many of your organizations, but I'm not sure how many people know the good heart and the good charity that you do everywhere and at every turn. I'm, I'm so appreciative. That's very sweet. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. I mean, the work that you're doing by educating people on the vegan diet, vegan lifestyle, its ramifications on the planet and on the collective consciousness is critical. So I want to thank you for the work you're doing. And I just want to say that um, a vegan diet, you know, if you talk about ahimsa, which is the first yogic principle, or the first of the yamas, non-harming, the vegan diet causes the least harm. And we know that, but how much harm does it cause when we eat animal product? It's, un, it, it's shocking. People don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Grains cause a global warming by two times all the train, planes, and automobiles. It's just the cows that we birth into suffering. The, the grain, the oil, no one knows how much oil just to manufacture the meat, the water, and then the karmic disaster that occurs when we birth 40 billion animals into suffering every year. It's, it's just it's catastrophic, the amount of danger, I mean harm, that we cause to our future and to ourselves today. And why do you feel that there's such an unconsciousness about it, even though it's becoming well, more you, aware? Mankind has been unconscious of many things, if you let them, uh, whether it's bombing innocent people or ethnic cleansings, again and again reoccur. We have to keep um, a light glow through meditation, through self-reflection, and then as individuals we have to make choices. And this is how society goes, as each individual does. And so as each individual chooses to be more compassionate and be um, conscious of the suffering of animals and conscious of the abuse of the planet and even concerned with their first chakra, protecting themselves from the poison that they could ingest. If they, if they become more concerned or aware of these issues than they, they affect everyone by making choices that promote a better future and a better um, self kind of uh, awareness. Would you mention what a chakra is and what the first chakra is? Well, in, 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 the, the, the first chakra, the Mulandara chakra, is, is take care of your first self. You know, the first chakra is about taking care of the self. I mean, if you're observing and taking care of it, then it's, First chakra, take care of yourself so you can serve others. So this, this, so if you're aware of that, then you wouldn't want to put animals in your body. If you're aware of the sickness that it causes, and then of course all the harm and other things that it causes are really uh, go deep and affect you as well. Not only the harm that it causes to you, but that it causes to the planet because we are absolutely connected to the planet and the other animals. So as we are one collective, as we cause that much harm by eating something that makes us sick anyway, then we can, we must get ourselves off it. And that's what you're promoting, I appreciate it. Yes, and I'm, I'm trying to reach people who might not have ever thought about stepping into being vegan and uh, have been concerned that there's too much to learn, that there's too much nutrition to pay that's attention e to. Easy. You know, people think that you're, you're missing all these nutrients and it's not necessarily true. In fact, it's not true. There are ways around it if you're very concerned, and most people who eat animal product uh, are eating a very bad diet in terms of nutrition. But if you don't eat animal product, you're more likely to have a better diet uh, in terms of nutrition. And then if you were to pay attention, you could even have even a better one. Most people who eat animal products, uh, they're not get, trying to get a balanced diet, they're just eating what's in front of them. And that diet, most likely, is not better than any vegan diet. For, for sure, it's not better. But it's most likely not um, it's just as deficient, if there is any deficiencies in that diet, as any vegan diet could have. So you're better off going vegan, and if you want to add uh, nutritional uh, pieces to it to make sure that you have a full, healthy diet, then you can do that. But you need, need to do that anyway. Because just because you wake up in the morning and have a steak doesn't mean that you're having the right, that's good for you. In fact, it's bad for you. It makes mm -hmm. you sick. Mm -hmm. and, and so that reality it has to set in. People have to know how much healthier a vegan diet is and how much more conscious it is regarding that planet and our, our commitment 
to uplift others and, and to the planet. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the, the planet because I think a lot of people don't ever put together what they put on their fork and connect it to the environment. They, they, it just seems to be so, no disconnect, or so disconnected. In most well, that's the intention of the, the people who sell animal products. They don't want you to be awake. Um, they, they spend a lot of time convincing you that, you know, for instance, dairy is a food product, that you have to have dairy. It's absolutely not true. So these ideas that they've sold us you know, lots of times it's because they can lobby our, our government and misinform them and push them to misinform the public, or they can run advertisements that are uh, that are wrong, straight that are wrong, and and misinform the public. So they 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 spend a lot of time and make a lot of money feeding us crap, and I think we have to be aware of of, of that and make choices on our own. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how how would you convince somebody not to have dairy? Well. I haven't had dairy in a very long time. I feel good. My example is a great way of um, convincing people. I'm 55 years old coming up, right? So I'm not a child, but I feel pretty good. And I think it's part of it because of my diet. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to interject here that when I came in downstairs and I said I was coming up to your office, uh, we uh, we got to talking because I was a little earlier with the, with the concierge downstairs, and he said, "Oh, Russell Simmons! Oh my goodness, he's so young and he's so kind and he's so he's just so calm all the time and and he just looks so good." And I said, "Well, you know, he's vegan." He said, "I guess that's why." <laughs> well, that's sweet. Yes, he was he was very complimentary. Uh, if do you have a go-to dish? that you tend to, I mean, I still... I don't cook often, but every so often I'm stuck, on, stuck at home. And I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I eat the junk food. I have these vegan chicken nuggets, <laughs> spicy buffalo nuggets, and I just take spinach and put them in the olive oil for a minute just to wilt it, put the nuggets on top of it, a bunch of hot sauce. It's my go-to dish. Oh, it's like terrible. I throw, it all happens in like, you know, the 45 seconds it takes to heat the nuggets. And at the same time, I, I wilt the spinach put like soy sauce, I make it spicy, and then pour the spinach on top of the nuggets, and I'm done. And it takes like about a minute, a minute. you know, it's a hot meal. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my go-to dish for now. I mean, it'll change next week, I'll have a different one. But this one I've been having quite a bit, so. Well, you've made me hungry. Uh, I also know that you did a great book called Super Rich. That was your second book. Yes. And a lot of people thought they were going to find out how to, uh, you know, to uh, create a business and no, but make a lot of money. No, but the Super Rich book, despite, you know, people's, uh, some people were surprised that it wasn't only about business. It was the core about your relationship with the world and how to become a better giver. As we learn to give more, we get more. So good givers are great getters. So the book really was a prosperity book. But it told you to start at the beginning, you know, not to train but to give. And I, it, it talked about um, how all success stories really manifest. Most everyone, and, and success stories on the outside are not the ones I'm referring to, but they are ones that, if you follow them back, they come to a spiritual notion and a connectivity in almost every case. There are people who can, of course, earn money and have uh, worldly success, but then they don't get the benefit of the success that we're referring to, a broader far-reaching, far, much more far-reaching kind of success. That's what Super Rich is about. So it's about, you know, uh, how, what attitude you need to interact with the world, you know, and about principles that are really business principles but come from a spiritual space. And that's probably missing in a lot of, a lot of uh, corporations and businesses, and yet they do well, but we wonder how, how um, happy or how gracious or what the experience is. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a lesson that we all should learn. It's written in every scripture over and over again. This idea of, you know, if you're a vegan, don't run a steakhouse. You know, <laughs> just make choices in businesses. And as a business yogi, you should be able to give the world something you're proud of. And the book is about that. Could you share just a moment of um, your meditation? Because I think it's something else that's so greatly overlooked well, I, you know, I, in our I, culture. I'm a, I'm on the board of the Transcendental Meditation Group, the David Lynch Foundation. We've given tens of thousands of kids meditation. And it's been a great success. Uh, this, the foundation's work is growing rapidly. And I'm, I'm really proud to be on their board and serve them. Uh, my kids meditate twice a day. Ooh. And I meditate twice a day. It's really been a big part of my life. The same time every day? 
Uh, no, not always the same time. When I wake up in, in, in the middle of the day, towards the end of the evening, early evening. If someone have, has never medit meditated before, what would be your instruction? Sit and be patient. Repeat a mantra. Um, and be patient in silence. Agree not to move in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, I, gave, I wrote a book called Mass Mantra, and it talks about you know, different tricks to calm the mind, because I think all meditations are tricks to calm the mind. Uh -huh. But by being still, the nervous system calms. And as the nervous system calms, the mind has no choice but to follow it. So being still yeah. and relaxing. And if you repeat, I gave the mantra, Mass Mantra, in my book, it's called Rum, Rum, Rum. Uh -huh. So if you repeat Rum, Rum. to yourself. The, you re the resonance of it. And the vibration can help to calm you. But it doesn't matter if it doesn't or it does. The mind will be like a monkey. It'll jump around like crazy. The mind's going to say, fuck you, I don't want to meditate. <laughs> and you're like, it doesn't matter what you want to do, I'm going to sit here anyway. Because the mind will make up its mind to sit and settle. Like a, mon a monkey in a cage, it's bouncing around, and the cage doesn't move. What does the monkey do? It settles. This is how the mind is in the body. It can jump around, but it cannot leave. And if you don't move, it'll settle. Mm -hmm. So this is how we meditate. But it's more, but I mean, it's, that's enough. If it's a person a was patient and sat with that mantra and didn't move, he would have no choice but to slip deeper into meditation. Mm -hmm. That's such amazing advice. I, I can't tell you what value it's given me in this moment. Uh, in completing, what is your vision for the future? Well, everybody meditated. A more peaceful, happy planet. Everybody was vegan. A more peaceful, happy planet, and my goal is to contribute something towards a more peaceful, happy planet. That's it. Simple. Thank you. Thank you so much.